Hey guys, this is Dan from LearningCameras.com and here we have the Canon 5D Mark III and then the brand new Nikon D7100. And we're gonna be doing some video tests on these cameras. So, you know, this is not a competition in a normal competition. These two cameras are in completely different segments. The reason I wanted to do this is very simple. The Canon 5D Mark III is really regarded as one of the better DSLR video cameras that you can currently buy. Unfortunately, it's pretty high priced. You're looking at 3,000 to 3,500 uh, just for the body. And it's really out of reach for a lot of people. And it might be a little bit too much for a lot of people. So let's see how good Nikon is getting and see if it can kind of compete with the 5D3 on a limited basis. See what the drawbacks are with going with a uh, crop sensor camera or a much cheaper camera. And see if you're really losing enough to make up the difference in price. You're talking almost three times as much money for the 5D Mark III as it is for the Nikon. So, you know, really and truly, this is not a competition. Um, the Canon is probably gonna win most of these tests, so that's not the question. The question is, I want you guys to see the side-by-side -side between a $1,200 camera and the uh, top of the line $3,500 camera for video right now, other than maybe like a Canon 1DC. But this is, this is really the most, um, high-end normal video camera that we can get. So let's take a look at some of these tests and uh, see how the cameras do. So real quick here, let's take a look at uh, some of the functionality of the different cameras. Now, both of these allow you to do a lot on them. So both of these do have microphone in and headphone out. You can see audio readouts on both of these, so that's very nice. Uh, no issues whatsoever on anything like that. We get readouts of basically all the regular information that we would want. Uh, I actually think that Canon displays a little bit too much and you can even fill up the screen further. And once I lose those audio controls, I have to get all of this other stuff on there that I don't really need. On the Nikon, I can bring up uh, the I button to bring up some additional controls. On Canon, bring the Q button and I can control those as well. Now, some of the interesting things, uh, let's go back to shooting. If I go ahead and turn this on and turn this camera on, now we're recording on both. So the nice thing about the Canon is all of that information kind of disappears off the screen now so I can kind of see what's going on, see how it's looking. Now if I try to change some stuff, I'll go ahead and change my shutter speed, no problem whatsoever. I can change my aperture, it'll show up on the screen exactly how it is. Now on the Nikon, I can change my shutter speed just fine, it's reflected on the screen. And the minute I go to change the aperture though, nothing happens, I am locked out of that. Now I can change the ISO on the Nikon, it does register that. On the Canon, I can also change the ISO and it does register that. On the Canon, I can also change the white balance, um, I believe. And, oh, no, I can't. I am, so I'm locked out of the white balance on that and I'm also locked out of the white balance on the Nikon. So if I hit white balance, nothing happens on that. Another aspect of this is going to be the audio controls. Now the audio controls on both of these cameras are uh, completely monitored. You can monitor them and you can control the M independently. So let me go ahead and turn these both off. And if I hit the I button on the Nikon, it brings me up into my audio control and I have full audio control manually from uh, manual all the way up to auto. And I can see a real time playback of what's going on with that. Now with the Canon as well, if I go into my queue, I can click on this and I can see my audio and I can control it just like anything else. Um, now something that Canon does is that this is also a soft touch button and what that means is that I can actually just barely tap on this and it will actually control my audio in uh, while I'm recording and it does so silently because if I change it with this dial it's pretty noisy you'd pick that up on a microphone without a problem so you can adjust your audio quietly on this camera whereas you can't on the Nikon. The Nikon is gonna be, um, well, this control, which is pretty quiet. So I will say that that's not a bad uh, situation either on a Nikon. Now, if we get out of there and I go ahead and hit record on both of these. On the Canon, if I hit my Q button, I can still actually bring up any of these dials by soft touching, and I can also uh, press on them and change any of the things on them. I can also change the audio control while I'm recording on this. Now on the Nikon, to do the same thing, I would have to uh, use these buttons here, which is going to um, obviously pick up a little bit of sound if you were recording live when doing it. And I also have no control over the audio while I am in this. So the I button is locked out. 
all of my controls are basically locked out of the Nikon when shooting. So that's the only problem with it, is when I'm shooting, I am locked out of those controls. Now that's really only a problem if you're going to be shooting um, with the microphone input and with a headphone out. Uh, if you were to use another recorder, you wouldn't have those issues. So you can use the mic input and the headphone out to monitor your audio. So that's great to do on the Nikon. Unfortunately, we're going to be a little bit limited on what we can change while shooting. And so really, you're going to want to make those changes ahead of time. We're also limited on changing the aperture while shooting. So this is a very good camera if your situations are predictable, your audio is not going to change, your video is not going to change as far as your light levels. If you're going to get into a changing environment, something like the Canon is going to serve you a little bit more because you're going to get uh, to be able to change those settings while shooting. Um, if you're giving a presentation or something like that and the audio from the microphone is getting a little bit loud and you just want to bring that down a little bit, you can do all that soft touch without, um, without making any mess up on the recording. You will not hear any of the noise from the camera and you can make all of those adjustments while shooting. Now here's our first sharpness test and as we take a look at it, uh, it's pretty clear to see that the Canon on the left is a little bit better than the Nikon. Nothing horrible on the Nikon, it's just a little bit sharper on the Canon. Now as we zoom into 100% you can begin to see that. I am actually a little bit surprised because uh, the Nikon doesn't have the low pass filter on it and the Canon does and the Canon's is pretty strong actually so I, I actually expected the Nikon to be a little bit sharper on there but we are seeing that the Canon is a little bit better on that. Now taking a look at a normal scene, we can really see that both of these cameras hold up really well in a dynamic range test. Um, both of these cameras are really holding on to their colors and Nikon even seems to be just a tiny bit better too holding on to some of those colors on there. And uh, I will say that the Nikon does lean a little bit more to the green and yellow and the, Nik and the Canon to the red so you can see that uh, emphasized in this scene. Now taking a look at just general motion, both of these cameras look unbelievable. Uh, they're very smooth, everything looks nice about them. The Canon, once again, is just a little bit sharper, but the Nikon still looks very good. Now taking a look at just one more sharpness test, uh, the Canon is a little bit ahead of the Nikon on here. We're still able to make out the detail in the Nikon, but just a little bit more contrast and clarity in the Canon. Now taking a look at rolling shutter, I mean this is something that we have to deal with on all DSLRs. It's really nothing better on the Canon versus the Nikon. They're both the same, they both use very similar sensors, so you know we're not expecting anything to change much and they both look just about identical. Now right before we go on to this next scene, I just want to show you the scene. Uh, both of these cameras are taking everything the same. My camera that I'm taking this picture with is actually white balanced, the same as both of these cameras, and they're both white balanced to the same Kelvin white balance. The uh, Nikon on the left you can see is very yellow uh, green tint on the screen. The Canon looks about like the scene looked so we're really able to see that difference on the screen as well. It's pretty obvious on the Nikon it made it a little difficult to get some accurate colors and focusing on that. Now taking a look at the scene, at 1600 ISO both of them look very good. Uh, no problems at all, the Canon is just a smudge ahead on that one. Bumping that up to 3200 ISO. This is begin when we begin to start to lose the Nikon on there. 3200 is pushing it for it. We can see that the Canon is still holding up really well thanks to that full frame sensor. Now at 6400 ISO, this is where the Nikon really falls apart, uh, mostly in due to the fact that it has that crop sensor camera. We're going to see the same things from Canon 70s and the Canon 60D and all those kind of crop sensor cameras that are not as good in low light either. So the 5D3 is really able to hold on to a lot of those blacks and a lot of the grain, even at very high ISOs of 6400 ISO. Now one more scene on the low light. Uh, we're going to take a look at this and you can see that the, this is shot at 6400 ISO and it's definitely a clear winner for the Canon on this one. Uh, crop sensor just can't hold up to the low light results. And one more on this one. At 1600 ISO both look very good, very usable. Canon a little bit ahead but not by much. At 3200 ISO we're starting to see the breaking point of the Nikon. And once again at 6400 ISO, the Nikon is pretty much unusable and the full frame Canon will be usable on that. So if that's all right with you, then you're going to enjoy the Nikon. Just stay under 1600 or 3200 ISO and you'll be fine. One last sharpness test is this brick wall. And uh, we're going to see that once again the Canon is just a little bit sharper and I, I just really was a little bit surprised at that. And zooming into 100 we can see the same thing. A little more contrast on the Canon as well.
Now, as far as Moray and aliasing, I really was concerned about the Nikon, but we're not seeing anything bad on this test. Uh, really nothing to be concerned of. Everything looks smooth. Uh, the, the fact that the low-pass filter is gone doesn't seem to be an issue for the Nikon on this one. Everything just all around looks good. So I'm very impressed that the Nikon is able to hold off on that Moray and aliasing, even without that low-pass filter on it. So overall, it was pretty easy to see that both of these cameras are great cameras. Uh, they both shoot video very well. Like I said, this isn't a, a, a competition, so you're not really, I'm not gonna declare a winner on that particularly, but we're gonna see the areas, we just saw the areas that the Nikon maybe struggles to keep up with the Canon, or any areas that the Canon uh, didn't, didn't quite make it up to the new Nikon. So, I mean, overall, we're, we're looking very good on both of these cameras. Now, the Canon uh, does not have any way of exporting HDMI straight out to a recorder, so you're stuck using the memory cards that are in it, but Canon has announced that they are gonna update that in the firmware, so we don't have to worry about that one. Um, the, the problems with the Nikon, we have not received any word yet of a update for um, pretty much all of those aperture modes, things like that from firmware. Uh, we haven't heard of anything for the D600 either, which has the same thing. So I'm not sure that we're going to see that on these cameras. But uh, overall, both of these cameras do very well. It's pretty clear to see that the 5D Mark III does offer a little bit more, uh, especially if you're using some of the functionality of it, like audio recording, things like that. So if that's something you need, that's going to be better. At ISO 3200, 1600, both of these cameras are very similar. When you start getting into that high-end range above 3200, that's when the full-frame sensor kind of picks in picks up and that's where the 5D Mark III has a has a clear advantage on that. So overall, you know, you can't go wrong with the Nikon D7100. It offers you quite a bit for the money. 1200 bucks is nothing to pay for a camera that offers quality like this. But overall, you will see the difference in something like a Canon camera, especially the 5D Mark III. Um, now, as you move down the list into the 7D or the 6D, uh, what, or the 60D, any of those cameras that we have now, a lot of them do have some limitations on them as well. So if we really compare, and we'll do some comparisons against the Nikon and some of the cameras that it's most closely related to that Canon has right now, the Nikon really beats them in a lot of ways. So we'll do some, some real comparisons on those because those are going to be more of a competition. We want to look very closely at those two cameras and see uh, the differences between them. This so much is, is really just to see uh, how good the Nikon is in comparison with something like the Canon, which is known as one of the better video cameras. So overall, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, you can check out some of the other videos that we have. Head to learningcameras.com. Uh, take a look at the links we have set up there. If you use any of those links, it'll kind of help support what I do right now and bringing you some of these reviews. So uh, please help me out with that. And uh, overall, happy shooting. Uh, both of these cameras, you can't go wrong. I love the 5D Mark III for video though. It's really hard to go wrong with a camera like that.